Hey, uh, Dave, how are you? I'm all right, yeah. It's early. You've had your coffee? Uh, I've had one coffee. Well, that should be enough for anybody at this it's time. A, of it's day. enough for this, and then I'll need another one, probably. So we're here on Native Instruments. Again, another company that doesn't really often go to trade shows, but obviously... I think just this one. This is hometown, Berlin, I guess. You know, well, Not for you, perhaps, no. but, <laughs> but for, uh, the, for the company. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, only this one they do, as far as I know. Okay, so. and... Um, we spoke to you last year, last year's Super Booth, uh, yes. and you're what you're kind of one of the reactor developers, right? Uh, the um, blocks developers. Yeah, yeah. I sort of designer developer. There's about three. It spends three, four sort of us doing the blocks development. So, uh, what have you been beavering away doing over the last twelve months? Then? Um. So I mean, after after last year, we had the uh, we put a few out on the user library, and we had the CV integration stuff, and then we started focusing on some new ones as well. Uh, we've so we've got five new ones to show you this year. Oh right, okay. Um, I mean, the idea was so I mean, the first blocks were like kind of what you'd expect from a modular system, all the kind of bread and butter stuff, and then we did this integration so we could show how you could connect your modular with your computer uh, with with Reactor, and then. We wanted this time. We thought we'd kind of focus on what we can do in Reactor. That's kind of harder to do with the modular stuff. So, modular is really good for like the sort of tangible interface, and obviously it's it's a little bit harder to offer that when you only have a screen. So we thought we'd focus on something that has a really nice visual interface, something that's quite visual to to work with, and also maybe some different DSP stuff that you can do with a computer that's much harder to do with the modular. Okay. Well, we better get cracking then. If there's that many. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well, five in total. But yeah, we can go through them as you want. So, um, what's this one then? So this is, I mean, we've done two sort of oscillators. This is the first. It's a dual oscillator, um, but kind of put together in a slightly different way. And we spent a lot of time working on the parameters to make it really tweakable. So you can just you can just turn knobs and it gets all sorts of weird, gnarly sounds out of it. Um, it's just a lot of fun. It sounds quite digital, but it's still, I don't know. I, I, I really like this one, actually. I know, so, you wanna, so basically, you start off with like a pretty clean sine wave, and then you have phase modulation frequency modulation and a wave folder. You can, modulate, you can modulate the input into the wave folder as well. And you can change the sort of modulation wave shape. And then you so can... That's all like morphing as well. Yeah, it? and then you can... Um, this is like a multiplication, like the ratio between the two oscillators. these really sort of warping sounds. It's got some sync options, so you can hard sync the two oscillators, like this. You can sync them the wrong way and it gets a bit... get a bit broken, or you can cross sync them and then it gets totally... So it gets okay, really unpredictable yeah, yeah. and weird. I mean, it, it's great for like thick bass sounds. Um, it's really good for percussion stuff as well. I mean, I get I get pretty heavy-handed with it and make really gnarly sounds, but the sound design guys are really good at getting some really nice, tame, sort of complex harmonic sounds out of it too. So it's really sort of versatile. And as I said, it's all sweet spots all the way. I mean, it's intended to be at least. Ah, right, okay, interesting. I, I, I've always wondered, I mean, so can anyone develop uh, blocks if they have Reactor? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, we've, we put... For the first release, we made a template which had all the sort of panel, basic panel elements and a lot of the internal core stuff to get you started. But yeah, you can just go right in and just get started on it, basically. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and there's a huge user library contribution already. Like, there's hundreds that people have made. And, and I guess you could start with one of those and then deconstruct and use Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we want to encourage people just to, I mean, what, even ones that we've made, just to go in and find the bits that they think are interesting and just put them into their own and really just do whatever they want with it, basically. It's totally right. open like that. So, um, more modules. Oh, more modules. OK. So That's one. Yeah, that one. Uh, let me see what else we got. So, uh, da -da -da. This is like the other sort of oscillator thing. Oops, there we go. And basically, it's, it's kind of, um, it's got a sine wave oscillator, and then it's kind of like a two-step sequencer that just switches between the two frequencies. So if you do it like this, it's just modulating between the two frequencies. And you can set these. So it's kind of straight like that, but then you can change the speed that it's doing it at. So you get this sort of right, right up into audio. Right oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've also got, um, you can sort of weight a comparison to which one it's more likely to go to. So you can say, okay, it's more likely to go to this side or more likely to go to this side. And then you can put some instability into the clock as well. And it's... 
Sounds like Depeche Mode right there. Well, yeah, I mean, we wanted a noise source and we, we, we made like 20 different noise sources. And this is the one that felt like it was most fun to just modulate and turn knobs on and stuff. And you can get it to track pitch as well. You can do a lot of stuff with it, but it's just, I don't know, it's just a lot of it's fun. Got, I mean, it's, I, I like that you're there's a sort of uniformity to these modules that you created so far that has a sort of large character readout and the, and the waveform seems to Yeah, be. yeah. I mean, we wanted to... I mean, obviously, it's something you can never really do, but we wanted to try and avoid having knobs and buttons and try and make them a little bit... Get your dragging and moving over Well, yeah, them. just interact with them in a little bit of a different way. Um, I've got another one I can show you which is really good for that, actually. Um, so, let's see. We've got... Um, yeah, this is a morph filter. So... In effect, it's a triple, it's three bandpass filters that run in uh, parallel. Um, and so it's really good for um, sort of formant type sounds, that kind of thing. But then when you've got resonant bandpass filters, there's a lot of other things you can do with it as well. So this is like a kind of pretty typical. Oh, that's really quiet. There we go, let's give it a bit more volume. <laughs> So really good formant type sounds. We've given you some preset formants. There's, so there's a bit, there's a hint of the Delay Llama in there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, we were kind of listening to this a little bit. You can drag your own formants into this. This is like your sort of morphing area where you can ah. morph around. You can set how many different formants you have in there, or you can double click on this and go into this little editor and make your own if you want to as well. You can save them as like little user ones and use those elsewhere as well. You've got some sort of general controls which affects all of them like resonance and pitch, uh, FM and tilt which is like the sort of uh, amplitude relationship between them. <laughs> all of this is modulatable as well so you can do that kind of stuff but it's also nice to put actually noise through it you get this really kind of <laughs> this kind yeah. of whistling and if you put low frequency you can start to ping them it gets really good too. Actually, I've got another one that's even better for this, actually. Hang on a second. Uh, this one. The other thing, because it's these triple filters, you can actually send a different input into each of the... So you've got with three inputs, so you can put something different into each of the inputs. Ah, okay. Take all the outputs separately as well. Uh, so you still get the morphing, but then they're sort of still tied together. Um, so this is like a... Is that going to run? Why is that not running? Uh, okay. Why is that so quiet? So now I'm just pinging them with this clock divider to give them this little pinging pattern. And then... That's oh, so very West Coast, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just pinging filters. And then um, we've also made some preset chords. You can make your own chords as well. And then you can morph between the chords and the tunings. So it's like a minor and a suspended chord or whatever. Um, you can still tune those all together. Change the filter type to go to this really resonant 8-pole thing. Give it some FM. And you can really get these kind of very nice quite lush sounds out of it actually. Oh, and it'll all... I don't know, it's a lot of fun this one. It's, it, you can do a whole lot of stuff with it, it's pretty deep. Um, uh, it's a very interesting sounding. And, and I think there's, you know, the, the, in traditional synthesis, you know, playing the filter is, you know, something that you might just go, oh, yeah, I'll play it. but this is taking it to another level, right? Well, yeah, I mean, we spend a lot of time, especially with like the resonance scaling, so that it, it never completely blows up, but it gets very, very close to it. Um, it's just little things like that that took a while to get right. But. And I guess that, that, so that adds to this kind of musicality of something like this, right? Well, yeah, I mean, especially when you're morphing through a lot of frequencies, you don't want it to suddenly explode and then get really quiet and stuff. So it's pretty controllable like that. So you can use it more of an instrument than it just a sort of... Oh, interesting. I yeah. like that. And um, again, got that kind of look to it that's well, consistent. As I, as I said, it's just as well focusing on sort of the kind of interfaces that you wouldn't really be able to do with a normal modular that we can do with a screen, basically. It's a little bit more... You get a lot of visual feedback from it when you're really switching all this kind of stuff. You can see what the filters are actually doing. and It's just, you know, as I said, it's... it's and you can tune them actually to, to notes. Yeah, yeah, you can switch between frequencies and notes as well. So, oh, right, And you can set that for each of those little slots on the filter as well. Neat. Um, we've got... Um, let me see what else we've got. Uh, okay, yeah, we, we did, and we did two sequences as well. There's, um, I think this is really cool, actually. Um, the idea is it's, uh, it's a 16-step sequencer, but we've taken kind of the attributes that you have for a note. So you've got, you know, the pitch, the octave, the velocity, whether it's tied and a gate. And then rather than running them all together as one static 16-step sequence, you can, like, run them in different directions and make the pitch sort of a different value of steps long. So if I just run it... So at the moment it's just doing a... 
repeating 16 steps, but then I can make the pitch lane a little bit shorter, make the gate a little... And then shift it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's still, and you know, make them run in different directions as well. So you, you get just like almost like a constantly evolving variation on the sequence that you made. It's really good for like acid type sequences. And I guess you can output that to your rack world as well if you want. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I've been doing when no one's watching, just sitting and jamming away. Um, and yeah, you can, you can perform with it really nicely as well. It's just like. It just it breaks that sort of cycling 16 steps over and over again. It's really good for that. Um, and then the other one, the, the sort of last one we've got is... I think I've got a patch with both of them in, actually. That'd be even better. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with Massive, like the old native synth. Um, sure. Basically, I wanted, it's something we wanted there for ages. See, the performer lane from Massive, where you basically you can draw a modulation in as, as sort of shapes on a sequence. So these are like static shapes, where you can draw like different, you know, like lines and stuff. And oh, use so that as a modulation. those kind of pencil tools. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then again, I... But I've got, I think in this, and then you've got two lanes of that, which you can run at different directions and different offsets and lengths. Um, and you've got a separate output, both of them, and then you've also got a mix between them. So I've, I'm using this to control the cutoff on this filter. Um, so that's like quite a static -y. Or I can go to this channel, it's giving me like a, a sort of uh, envelope type thing, or you can crossfade between them. And again, you get these just like sort of constantly changing sort of modulation patterns. And you can still randomize them all and do this kind of stuff. Like. And again, that was a fun. Yeah, yeah, and that, that can go to anything. You know, again, you can use it as a modulation source, you can quantize it and run it to an oscillator, send it out to your modular, all, all of that good stuff. So are these are all, uh, are these all sort of native? Um Native ones. I mean, do you have to? Are they buyable, or do they just come when you? It, we're, it'll be another free update to blocks. Basically. I mean, I think, as far as I know, the intention is that all blocks updates will always just be a free addition to Reactor. Right. Okay. And um, the whole Reactor and blocks kind of ecosphere became uh, a lot more affordable quite recently, didn't it? It was uh, they dropped the price. Yeah. Was it last year sometime? And so yeah. I mean, between five and six, they made a massive reduction on the price, which is really cool. I mean, I hope it gets more people into it because it's a lot of fun to use it. Thank you very much, Dave. That's no awesome. problem. All oh, right. Thanks a lot.